In this episode of the Plastering Basic Series, we're going to talk about all the different ways of immobilizing fractures and joints from the shoulders down to the toes. Let's talk about the shoulder first. Generally in the shoulder, we tend to use slings more commonly than casts and slabs. And the two most common types are a broad arm sling and a collar and cuff. A broad arm sling is designed to support the weight of the elbow and actually lift the shoulder up to take the pressure off it and stop it from drooping down. A collar and cuff is actually designed to hold the hand via the wrist to the neck and let the elbow hang free. This is designed to provide some gentle traction to the proximal humerus. My general rule is that if you have an injury to the proximal humerus where you want a little bit of traction to help perhaps align things a little bit better, I would use a collar and cuff. Although you could also say that a broad arm sling is going to be a lot more comfortable because it stops that dragging feeling. For fractures that are involved in the scapula and the clavicle, which are two bones that if you think about it actually suspend the upper limb, I think a broad arm sling is going to be better in those instances because it stops the shoulder, be it the distal clavicle, the acromion or the proximal humerus from dragging down and weighing that fracture open. The only time that we really use plasters for the humerus are when they have mid shaft fractures and for this fracture we typically might ask for a what's called a U slab or a hanging U. This is effectively a U shaped stirrup that goes from the axilla around the elbow and back up on the outside of the arm. There are some technique videos that I'll have in the link below um, if you want to see how to apply one of these well. The general principle here is again that it's providing some traction down as well as some lateral support from having it knocked and bent. We'll typically convert a U slab for a humeral shaft fracture to something called a Sarmiento brace or a coaptation splint. This is a thermoplastic splint that encircles the humerus and allows compression to cause elongation and therefore help with reduction and immobilization. A Sarmiento brace is typically applied by someone in allied health that's trained to apply them and involves the use of some fairly specialized equipment. Let's take a look at the elbow next. Typically for the elbow, we'll use a back slab as the common emergency department slab. And this can be helpful for fractures such as distal humerus fractures, proximal both bone forearm fractures, as well as articular dislocations of the elbow joint that have been reduced. It can also be used for things like olecranon fractures and even patients who have olecranon bursitis where it might be helpful to splint them in a little bit of extension. You can also use it for pediatric injuries such as a supracondylar fracture. The alternative to a back slab for the elbow as far as plasters go would be a full cast or a cylinder cast that's above elbow. These will be used for a similar indication. Some injuries such as undisplaced radial head fractures or other minimally displaced fractures of the elbow may even be suitable for a sling to be applied such as a broad arm sling. This might be more comfortable and allow earlier range of movement. In particular for radial head fractures it's quite common that we will change someone from a cast to a uh, sling of some sort to allow early movement even within the first one or two weeks. Let's take a little bit of a look further down towards the forearm. The typical injuries in the forearm involve radial and or ulnar shaft fractures. The options here are usually a above elbow cast as well. The reason being that we want to control pronation and supination of the forearm, which you can't do with a below elbow immobilization. If we look further down towards the wrist, the most common thing we see here in emergency departments is the use of back slabs and below elbow cylinder casts or full casts. One of the things I always like to mention and teach people is that if you have a break of both the radius and the ulna, give some thought as to whether or not it's worth stopping pronation and supination by using an above elbow cast. This is particularly important if they've had a dislocation of the distal joint between the radius and the ulna or if they've had complex fractures or ones that are more proximal rather than distal. Especially in patients who have small arms, it might be difficult to control a small fracture with a below elbow cast only. In some cases, and this is more for proximal fractures, we might even immobilize the patient in a straight arm cast, which is a cylinder cast with the elbow in extension. For wrist fractures, this is an area where we might use something called a radial gutter slab or an ulnar gutter slab which is basically a three-quarter cast, which allows a bit, a little bit more control for something like a reduction without completing the cast and causing problems with swelling. Another cast that allows for immobilization of pronation and supination without immobilizing elbow flexion is a sugar tong cast. It looks like a sugar tongs that you'd use to pick up a sugar cube and it runs as a U-slab effectively on the volar side, around the elbow and up on the dorsal side. 
immobilizing wrist flexion extension and pronosupination. When it comes to the hands and fingers, the most common cast we would see is casting in the position of safe immobilization, which people call the posi. It's typically in wrist extension, metacarpal flexion, and interphalangeal joint extension. The reason for this is that it places the ligaments in the position of tension of each of those joints to reduce the contractures and stiffness after the casting period. That's a fair summary of the upper limb splints and slabs. We'll work down now towards the toes. Mm -hmm.